In this video, I'm gonna show you how to go from this to this, and from this to this, and from this to this. And after we're done with this tutorial, I'm gonna give you some overall things to think about when you come to color grade your next project. So let's jump on Premiere and get into it. All right, welcome to this color grading tutorial. Uh, so quickly before I jump into this, I just wanna show you a couple of still images that I took off the day. So these are JPEGs. This shot here is very similar to the second shot in the film, uh, but it's a still image. What I want you to take away from this is that in pretty much every shot in this video, well, all the shots in this video, I'm shooting into the sun so that everything's backlit. The sun is, is never in the frame. It's usually slightly above the frame or slightly to the right of the frame. Uh, so it's slightly off camera. Uh, and what that does, it creates mood and contrast because we're shooting into the shadow side of, in this case, the landscape. Uh, but obviously if there was an actor in there, you'd be shooting into the shadow side of the actor. I've spoken about this in a previous video and why I think this is important. I'll put a link on the screen right now so you can check that out. Uh, but compare that to this shot here. So the sun's coming from the opposite direction, much less contrast, less moody. Um, and that's quite important. Well, it's extremely important, I think, because to create this grade, you need to be, uh, be aware of where the lighting is, where the sun is in this case, because that's gonna have a big impact on the overall look and the aesthetic. So anyway, that aside, let's jump in. This is all shot on the Panasonic GH5 in Vlog L 10-bit, 422, 24 frames a second. And the only difference in this tutorial uh, is if you were using like a Sony or a Canon or something in log is the very first step you would be choosing a log to Rec. 709 look specific for your camera. So first thing I'm gonna do is select that clip and then up here in basic correction, in, in input look, I'm gonna to browse to my Vlog L to Rec. 709 and we'll just apply that. So obviously that, put that, put that puts that into a sort of normal Rec. 709 color space. And now let's actually get into the actual grade itself. So. I really like to keep things as simple as possible. I don't like to make adjustments to things that I don't need to make adjustments to. I think people have a habit of, because all these controls are there, trying to use all of the controls, you really don't need to do that. Try and keep everything as simple as possible. So I'm gonna add some contrast to begin with. And then I'll generally go from the contrast to my shadows, because I wanna define kind of the mood and the darkness of the image. I'll leave it there for now, and I'm gonna jump straight into my color wheel. So I want the highlights to take on more of a yellow look because this was when the sun was setting, but uh, maybe a couple of hours before. So I wanna indicate that the sun is, is kinda of on its way down. So it's gonna push some yellow into the highlights. That'll do for now. I'm not gonna to touch any of the other wheels, but what I will do is I'm gonna go into curves and I'm gonna to go to hue versus saturation. I'm gonna pick that blue and I'm just gonna pop that a little bit. You may notice that the image is looking a bit weird because I've got proxies turned on. Let me just turn that off. And you can see now that all the colors are nice and smooth, no sort of um, blocking or artifacting going on. The other thing I think is really important, let me just go back to basic correction. You wanna define your black point and your white point in every image and you wanna try and keep those consistent so that they, the shots match. I'm gonna lift my white point in this to 80. So I want the bulk of the waveform just to be touching 80 like that. And then in, on my black point, I want that about five. I'm not gonna crush it all the way down because I wanna be able to see into the shadows. So those black and white points, I will keep generally pretty consistent throughout every single shot. Let's jump onto the next one because I don't want this video to last uh, three hours. What I'm gonna do to make this easy, I'm just gonna copy the grade off that shot, paste it onto this shot. Now this won't match perfectly, but it would be a kind of good, decent enough starting point. So let's have a look at the scopes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is bring down my white point to 80 as before. I'm gonna bring up the blacks to five where they were before. And I'm gonna raise my shadows on this one because the shadows are now too crushed or too dark, should I say. And just looking at the uh, RGB parade, I think this image is warmer than the previous image, ever so slightly. So I'm just gonna cool it off a little bit. And then what I'm also gonna do back in curves is I'm gonna 
bring more saturation to pop that sky a little bit more because in this in this shot uh, I am shooting way more into the sun so it's taken away from that saturation from the sky and what I'm also going to do is just pop the colors of those grass uh, this this grass more I'll just drag my endpoint out there so it includes more color and there something like that not not too much just a little bit and let's flick back back and forth between those two they match pretty well to me okay so what you should be able to kind of notice from these first two shots is I'm not doing a great deal uh, but what I am doing is consciously thinking about like where my white point and my black point is I'm consciously thinking about what I need to do to the next shot to make it match well with the with the shot prior to it so I'm looking at my RGB parade I'm looking at my vector scope and I'm looking at the waveform to determine okay what do what do I need to do to the next shot to bring it in line with the previous shot if I'm happy with the previous shot which I am in fact just looking at that it needs a bit more yellow in the highlights to match what I showed in the original finished video there I think that's that's more in line with the finished video that I actually you know rendered off that you can watch on the link in the description and that probably needs the same something like that so yeah but I'm not doing much so I'm not changing my shadows in the, in the color wheels or the midtones like the the, the the location is gorgeous I don't need to mess with it the curves I tend to use a hell of a lot so the hue versus saturation curve I tend to use a lot just to push more saturation into colors that I that I want to pop out more I also use the hue versus hue a lot so if we take that blue for example and I wanted to change the color of that blue I would use that to do to do so you know I could make it more teal like that but in this particular video I don't want to do that so I like the sky as it is so what I, I suppose the the message here is don't mess with it if it's not if it if it's looking pretty decent off on camera and you should always be aiming to make things look good on camera and not be trying to fix it in post you know as we say in England you know you can't polish a turd at the end of the day so uh, if you've captured rubbish in the first place you're not going to be able to save it in the grade okay so let's jump to a shot later on in the video we'll take this one here because I showed it at the beginning uh, again I'm still going to copy the grade I'll have to make a lot of changes to it but it's still a starting point looking at the scopes um, I can see my white point has moved slightly up to 90 IRE but that's okay because uh, the sky is much brighter at this stage the sun has set it's just behind the clouds here however uh, in curves obviously we no longer need this hue versus saturation for the blue I'm just going to reset the whole curve and what I'm going to do is pick that bunch of colors across that ridge there and I'm just going to extend out my uh, right hand side point to include more green I'm going to bring the midpoint to the middle and I'm just going to bump all that up just to warm it up slightly boost those colors but then I'm also going to go into my uh, color wheels and I'm going to shift over my highlights to way more of a sort of orange deeper orange now because obviously that is kind of what happens when the sun sets something like that so I'm going to bring my shadows down and then I'm just going to warm up the whole image slightly using the temperature slider just to warm up that sky even more and just give that warmth to the whole image so before and after all right so let's jump on to the last clip and I'm going to take the grade I'm going to copy the grade from the clip we've just graded so copy that paste that over and this one is much closer already um, I won't really need to make too many tweaks to this I don't think um, I do notice looking at the waveform between the two is that there's way more shadow information in the first shot so I'm just going to go back to basic correction and lift my shadows somewhere around there and I think this image needs warming up even more so I'm going to go into temperature and just push that and if you look at the vector scope you can see they match fairly well the sun is not is, is sort of down now out totally out of the frame so you'll see in the vector scope on this shot you can see it's drifting off into the yellow there because the sun is just behind the cloud but here the sun is nowhere to be seen so there's less yellow uh, but I'm fine with that you know I don't need to match that perfectly uh, it's just is the overall vibe the same so and I looking at them it looks pretty okay to me 
So the final thing that I would do uh, to sort of tie everything together, uh, generally speaking, I mean, every project is different, but for this project, what I did was uh, I drag an adjustment layer above all of the clips. And with this being a kind of landscape type video, I generally do want everything to be quite sharp. So I, I've shot this in log and obviously the, the sharpness is turned right down in log. So I'm gonna bring back some sharpness. Um, I don't use the sharpening in Lumetri. I use a magic bullet plugin called Colorista. So let's go and get that. We'll just drop that on there. And then under effect controls in Colorista here, you have something called pop that I've spoken about before in a previous video. So I'll just whack that up to 50% and we'll turn it off, turn it on. And it just nicely kind of, well, makes the image pop, I suppose. Um, and then what I would do over the top of that is add film grain. I've got some Fuji stocks here that I can upload to a link on Google Drive if you want. They are in another video that I did, but I can always upload them again. Uh, in fact, no, I'll put the link in this video as well. Um, so you can download these. There's a 16 mil and a 35 mil. I'll use 35 mil on this project. So I'll just drop it in and put that on the layer above. Switch the blending mode to overlay. And I'll drop the percentage down to 75. And that will just give the image a nice little bit of texture, but it's over the top of the sharpening. So it will make it kind of more organic, I suppose. Um, that's what I think anyway. That's, I mean, people have asked me how I do what I do in terms of the gradient, and this is how I do it. So, uh, and obviously I would extend that over to cover the whole video. All right, so final thoughts. I mean, every project is different. I generally approach grading the same way on pretty much most projects, but every project is different and every project will need, will have different considerations and things that you need to think about. But I think there are some sort of general rules and things that you should always be doing, such as setting your black and your white point and maintaining that in scenes that are the same and are similar. Another thing is sort of, and I have mentioned uh, this in another video, you'll find the link up there. White points are generally a lot lower down than, than a lot of people seem to think. Uh, kind of people who are new to color grading seem to think that you need to always be pushing your whites just below 100 and your blacks sort of just above zero. And really that's not true. I mean, you look at a lot of modern cinematography, even in daytime scenes, the white point is nowhere near 100. It's more like 70 to 80. I do discuss that in the other video, so go check that out. And then I think the other thing is don't overcomplicate it. I've, I, I've heard an interview with Jill, I don't know how you pronounce her name, I'm terribly sorry, Bogdanovich, who was the colorist for the Joker, in which she says she uses, I don't know, sort of three to five nodes. It might not have been Jill, it might have been somebody else from Company 3, but in DaVinci Resolve, they use like a minimal amount of nodes. People who, who are working in DaVinci that I've seen on YouTube where they've got 20 nodes or something, it's kind of ridiculous. You really wanna keep things as simple as possible and not to be adjusting things just because you can. I think that's one of the problem with the tools that we've got now, they're so powerful, you can do anything, but just because you can do anything, it doesn't mean you should. You really should just be kind of polishing what you've already shot. You really should be thinking about the grade before you've even stepped out of your door with your camera equipment. You should have thought about it way before. For instance, on this Tuesday, I'm going back out into the Peak Districts and I'm shooting a narrative project. I know the look I have got in my head. This is a project with an actor, with a story, the kind of things I, I like to shoot uh, more. The thing is, I've thought about the exact style of cinematography, the look, what I want the colors to look like. You know, I tell the actor what type, what clothing I want, what color clothes, because I know in the grade, if he hasn't got the right, right wardrobe, and if my lighting is not correct, and, and um, all the things that I can control being a sort of indie filmmaker, I'm controlling all of that stuff to make sure when I come into the edit, I come into the grade, I'm gonna be able to pull it together. So I'm not having to change colors in 
in Lumetri, how you can do with the uh, hue versus hue. I really want to use things like that sparingly. You shouldn't be trying to pull around your the colors of your image too much, especially if you're shooting on an 8-bit color camera, such as most Sony's, most Canon's, uh, most sort of lower end cameras or, or kind of mid-range cameras, uh, you haven't got a massive amount of flexibility in your colors. Um, even on the GH5, which is 10-bit, I often find if I'm trying to push things too much, the image will break. Get it right in camera. Think about everything that you're gonna do bef way before you get into the edit suite. I think that's my number one uh, message for this video. That way, all you're doing is enhancing what you've already shot. I think I'll leave that this, uh, uh, the, 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 I will leave this video there or it's gonna go on for forever. So I hope you got something out of it. I do enjoy making these types of videos. I, I really want my videos on YouTube to focus more about the art form of, of cinematography and not equipment and not sort of, you know, easy, quick hacks as you see a lot of videos, hacks and, you know, epic this or whatever. I, I know the YouTube algorithm, algorithm loves that stuff, but you know, for me personally, I want to really get better at producing great images and and I don't want quick, easy fixes, two minute videos or whatever. They're cheesy, you know, they can be helpful, I suppose, to some people, but that's not what this channel is gonna be about. Anyway, waffling over, that's the end of this video. Happy shooting, bye-bye.